Hi there. I have a really interesting story to tell to you today. It comes from a project called the Hawati Project, which was an attempt to save as much of the Syrian culture from the people who had to leave because of all the wars. And you'll find this to be very interesting and appreciate the efforts they took. Come along, and I think you'll enjoy it and you'll find out a lot of fun things. Thank you. The Enchanted Camel as told by a Syrian refugee. Once upon the time, there was a woodcutter who made a living for cutting wood in the forest. One day, he went there to collect wood and found a big log too heavy for him to carry on his own. He looked to the right and then to the left and saw a camel who seemed lost. He caught the camel and put the log on his back and went on to the market to sell it. And then he headed home. He put the camel in a separate room and gave him some barley that his wife had grown for their food and patted the camel's head and thanked him for his help. In the morning, the woodcutter went into the room to check on his new camel and to prepare him to go to work with him only to find that the camel had produced a golden egg. With joy and surprise beyond belief, he held the golden egg and rode the camel out into the forest. The same thing happened again and again and again for days. The camel would produce a golden egg, which the woodcutter would hide in a safe place. One day, the woodcutter was selling his wood when he heard the chief merchant announcing that all men must leave the market because the king's daughter needed to visit the shops. They did, including the woodcutter, who left his camel in front of a shop. The king's daughter passed by, looking at the merchandise, and the camel saw her and immediately fell in love. When his owner took him back home, he could no longer eat or drink, nor produce a golden egg. The woodcutter was surprised and told his wife to take the camel for a walk. Perhaps the smell of fresh air would bring him back to normal. The woman took him for a walk around town, and as she passed in front of the king's castle, the camel stood still, refusing to advance any further. The woman urged him to move out. He wouldn't budge, and when she asked him why, he told her that he loved the king's daughter and wanted to marry her. The woman told her husband the camel's story and how he'd insisted on being betrothed to the king's daughter. The woodcutter was at the loss and tried to convince the camel to change his mind, but to no avail. The woodcutter then put on his best clothes and went into the king's castle and requested to meet him. Then, in the king's presence, he asked for the hand of his daughter for his camel. The king went mad at the stranger's request, but his wise minister calmed him down and convinced him to order the woodcutter to perform miracles, saying that if he did, he would give his daughter in marriage to this camel, and if not, he would cut his camel's head off. The minister reasoned that this was a joke and would provide entertainment for the king and would relieve some of the stress that comes with ruling such a big kingdom. The king cleared his throat and said to the woodcutter, bring me a bunch of grapes that everyone can eat from without it diminishing. If you don't bring it here in the morning, I will have you and the camel beheaded. And if you do, I will allow the camel to marry your daughter. The woodcutter left the castle, returning home, and very sad and just downcast. When he told the camel of the king's request, camel said, Don't worry, everything will be better in the morning. In the morning, the woodcutter found next to the camel a golden plate on which a fresh bunch of grapes with dewdrops shimmering on each grape. He took it to the king, who ate a few grapes, and gave it to the minister and the entourage, and they all ate. Yet the bunch of grapes did not diminish by even one grape. 
The king was upset at the success of the woodcutter in performing this miracle, so he gave him another impossible task to accomplish. I want a carpet that can extend to cover the castles and all the streets of the city, said the king. The woodcutter told the camel of this new order, and the camel said, Don't worry, everything will be better in the morning. He slept deeply while the woodcutter kept turning in his bed, and in the morning he found next to the camel a golden chest containing a carpet made of silk and golden threads. He took it to the castle, and there the king ordered that the carpet be opened. The slave started to open it and spread it to cover the hallways. And the more it covered, the longer it, and wider it grew, until it covered all the streets and alleys of the city. The king was amazed at the skill of the woodcutter and made the last demand. I went to wake up in the morning and find an empty plot of land land next to the castle and another huge castle reaching to the clouds and everything inside it made of gold said the king the king never thought that any human could achieve this feat let alone an animal but this was exactly what happened when the woodcutter went home frightened at the difficulty of this request the camel calmed him down saying don't worry everything looks better in the morning light in the morning which he didn't seem any better than the night before, the woodcutter made his way anxiously to the castle, and beside it he saw a glorious palace that no eye had ever seen, nor ear had ever heard of, or any human had ever thought of. He went into the king's castle and went, walked to the main hallway to find the king sad and grim. The whole thing had started out as a joke and now has become a scary reality. How will he marry his daughter off to the camel? What will people say? What if he doesn't fulfill his promise? How can he face his conscience and his God? How will his little one accept the idea of his marriage? All these thoughts crossed the king's mind. As he was sitting on the throne and in front of the ministers and the entourage of woodcutter, all waiting for a word from him. Finally, he said to the woodcutter, All right, your camel will marry my daughter tomorrow. He immediately got up to tell his daughter of his decision. She cried and whined, but he rebuked her and saying, I made a promise and must keep my word. Otherwise, I will gain a reputation as a liar. So the wedding took place and the king's daughter was married to the groom, the camel. And she entered with him into her chambers in the castle. When night fell, she was surprised when the camel turned into the most beautiful, charming young man. She asked him about his secret, and he told her that he had been put under a spell by a witch who lived underground. He warned her not to tell anyone, otherwise he would disappear from life. Time passed by, and they were living happily ever after together with this secret, safely kept by the princess, until a war erupted between the kingdom and some of the enemies. And everyone in the land, including the royal family, took part in the fighting defending the kingdom. The camel, too, wanted to fight for his country and said to his wife, I will fight at night and wear a mustard-colored suit, but you will have to keep this a secret from everyone you know. And so it was. And one day, as the young camel man was defending the king's tent, he was wounded in the arm. The king ordered him to enter the tent and cover the wound with his royal handkerchief, which had his seal and name. The camel man returned home before sunrise. When the war was ended, his wife's sisters started boasting that all their husbands had taken part in the war, all except her husband, the camel. Without thinking, she answered that her husband did fight, wearing a mustard-colored suit, and gloriously defended her father, and she told him of the handkerchief that the king had used to cover the wound. When the camel learnt that she had divulged the secret, he became very angry and disappeared. The king's daughter was greatly saddened by the disappearance of her husband and told the whole story of her father. The king consulted his ministers, one of whom advised him to build a haman, 
which is a public bathhouse in the market that gives free entry to anyone who tells the story that happened to him. And so it was that the news spread through the country until someone came to the Cameron Bath and told many stories. However, none of them gave any inkling about the whereabouts and the disappearance of the son-in-law. After the noise surrounding the Hammond and its stories had subsided, a poor widow living on the outskirts of the city heard that bathing in the Hammond was free by order of the king. She carried her parcel, which contained her lufus soap, towel, bath, bowl, and clean clothes, and headed to the city center. At the Haman, they told her that in order to be allowed to enter, she must tell a story that had happened to her. She had nothing to tell. She headed back home, but since it was a long way and close to sundown, and the city doors were closed soon, she hesitated. What to do? She had no money to stay in one of the cons. She looked right and left and saw a yard with many trees. She decided to climb one of them and spend the night there. Close to midnight, the woman fell, the earth would open, and out came the most beautiful young man that she'd ever seen. His light overshadowed that of the full moon, and he carried three apples, crying and singing, an apple for the dove, an apple for the pigeon, an apple for my wife, who didn't keep my secret. He kept singing and crying all night until the first light came, and then the earth opened up again and swallowed him. The widow witnessed all of this and descended immediately from the tree and went to the Haman to tell her story. This is how the news came to the king and his daughter, and they rushed to the tree to spend the night there. And when the earth split open, and out came the young man crying and singing, the king's daughter jumped up, hugged him, and held him onto him tightly to prevent him from leaving her. She sobbed, Why did you leave me? And he answered, The witch turned me into a camel, so that no woman would have me. She has sent me to live with her underground if I'm ever betrayed by a woman. And you did not keep the secret. You betrayed my trust. She apologized and expressed her deep regret, asserting that she would never leave him no matter what. He took her with him underground. When the wush saw her and asked who she was, he pretended that she was a maid. The witch wanted to test her and gave her a, a beaded brush and ordered her to clean the house without losing one bead. Otherwise, she would have to return above ground. When the king's daughter started sweeping the house, the beads kept falling and filled the house. The husband quickly collected the beads and put them back on the broom. When the witch returned from the rounds outside, she saw that the house was very clean and gave the daughter of the king another impossible task to do. She gave her a chest and ordered her to take it to her sister's house in another country without opening it. The king's daughter carried the chest with great difficulty and walked toward the witch's house. On the way, she wanted to take a rest and put the chest down. But it fell and it cover opened, and out came snakes and monkeys who went all over the place. However, her husband was watching for the witch's tricks, and he collected all the snakes and monkeys and put them back in the chest. When the witch realized that the young man was in love, with the maid, she decided to marry him against his will and said that if the maid did not dance at his wedding, she would put a curse on her. The king's daughter had no option but to grieve and cry. Her husband, the camel, tried to calm her down, saying, Tomorrow, before the morning party starts, say that you will not dance unless they give you a lantern and a wick and I will take care of the rest. They brought the burning lantern and wick to the king's daughter, who carried them and danced. As she was dancing in the direction of the groom, he grasped the flaming lantern from her and threw it on the witch, and she was burnt and died. With her death, the curse was removed, and he was now free to return back home above ground, and they were both made their way back to the king's castle. The guards immediately informed the king that his daughter had returned with a strange young man. When the king saw them, 
He checked the young man's arm and saw his handkerchief with his seal and hugged them both and prepared a second wedding worthy of the bride and groom. Everyone lived happily ever after and had many boys and girls until death did they part. They oh, wasn't that interesting? Isn't it worthwhile to save important stories about a culture? And I think after you've heard this story, you'll realize it even more. And I thank you for coming today, and please come back as often as possible. Thank you.